The first eruption was 17 million. <coughs> My voice cracked. The first eruption was 17 million years ago. The Earth's crust ripped open and out poured millions of gallons of lava. The ash and molten rock spread over miles, turning the landscape into a fiery wasteland. But what if I told you that the same volcano that caused that eruption is very much still alive today, and that it's moved hundreds of miles? Now, before you go and max out your credit card in a last hurrah before the next eruption surely comes, although you will get that amazing TV you've been wanting, we actually don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. As in, it's going to be thousands and thousands of years from now. And if that isn't enough, we actually have an entire team of people monitoring the volcano 24-7 to make sure that there's no unusual activity going on. So that's good. But the story behind Yellowstone is fascinating, and quite literally, there is so much more going on under the surface than meets the eye. So the interesting thing about Yellowstone is that it's not just a park. It's actually a 40 mile wide volcano. In other words, the entire place is situated on top of a massive supervolcano. This means that the roads you drive on and the animals that walk that forest are all sitting above an active volcano. Now, since we've used the word so much already, let's define what exactly a volcano is. A volcano is an opening in the Earth's surface where the red hot contents deep below in the Earth's mantle escape out of. Volcanoes can form in a variety of different ways, but the method relevant to Yellowstone is something known as a hotspot. A hotspot is a specific location beneath the crust plate where magma has been erupting for a long time, as in millions of years. Now this is actually one of the less common ways that volcanoes form, and it's really just another reason why Yellowstone is so cool and so unique. We aren't sure why or how they form, but one theory is that hot spots are really just superheated portions of the Earth's mantle. And the mantle's already pretty steamy to begin with, but the hot spot is supposed to be even more so. Now what I think is the most interesting fact about volcanoes formed by hot spots is that they actually move over time. And like, no, they don't grow legs and just kind of walk over to the next scenic place that they think is beautiful, but what happens is really interesting. When the Earth's crust burst open over 17 million years ago, this was in Oregon. But now, Yellowstone is located in Wyoming. So something happened here. The answer is that it's not the hot spot or the volcano that moved, but the Earth's crust. We know that the crust is constantly moving at a rate of about one to two inches every year. These are our shifting tectonic plates. Different plates move at different speeds, but the point is that they all move, albeit very slowly. But when you take the cumulative effects of those tiny movements over time and spread them out over millions and millions of years, you can get pretty significant changes. So let's say that the sheet of paper represents the crust, and this pencil represents the hot spot in the mantle. So initially, the hot spot is right here, causing a volcano to form on this area of the Earth's crust. But over time, as the crust moves, even though the hot spot remains stationary, it's going to cause another volcano to form, it's just going to be in a different place. So over time, this happens again, and eventually again. Between the initial eruption 17 million years ago and the most recent Yellowstone eruption, there were several other volcanoes that popped up. You can actually trace this path along a map and see how the plates moved over the hotspot over time. Did I say the most recent Yellowstone eruption? I did. Right where Yellowstone is today, about 640,000 years ago, the hotspot triggered a huge eruption that caused the ground beneath it to collapse. Today, the crust above the hotspot is much thinner because of this eruption, and this allows incredible amounts of heat to escape up to the Earth's surface. This heat is exactly what causes all of Yellowstone's awesome and fascinating phenomena, like the eruption of Old Faithful, or all the colors that you see in the pools. Everything down to the bubbling mud pits is in some way related to this massive supervolcano sitting underneath it. One of my favorite things to learn when I went there was that, in the case of the pools, all the different colors actually represent different temperatures, and the way that this works is really, really interesting. Basically, the colors are actually different types of microorganisms that have evolved to thrive in these extreme temperatures. You can actually guess what the temperature in the water is in a certain area by looking at the color. For example, a species of bacteria that happens to be yellow loves to live at temperatures of around 160 degrees Fahrenheit, so when you see the yellow, you know it's around that temperature. The eruption of the geysers is also from the heat, and it's something that was really, really cool to watch. The water that's trapped underground is heated from the magma that's part of the hotspot. It boils and steams, and eventually, the steam builds up pressure. 
When the pressure gets too high, the geyser explodes. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so let's go back to the Earth's crust and how it moves. After the hotspot left Oregon and before it settled on Wyoming to form Yellowstone, Idaho was the state sitting above the area. This was about 10 to 11 million years ago. But here's where it gets even cooler. There is another national park in Idaho, right where the Yellowstone hotspot used to be, that has had tons of volcanic activity. And today, the entire landscape is covered with volcanic rock and craters, and honestly, it looks like a totally different planet. Now, I'm actually planning on making an entire video about this place because I think it's pretty cool. So if you're interested, definitely subscribe so you don't miss that. Just to be clear, the remnants here are not from the famous hotspot. They're actually from more recent eruptions around 15,000 to 2,000 years ago that resulted from volcanoes appearing for other reasons. But it's still an incredible thing to see with its own set of history, and overall, it just seems like this whole area of the country has been itself a massive hotspot for volcanic activity. So there you go. That is the story of how Yellowstone National Park was formed. And if you like this video, there will be many more to come. This is actually only the first video in an entire series that I'm planning about our national parks. And then I'm going to dive into the science behind the beauty of the parks and present all the information to you in hopefully a very fun and easy to understand way. So if you don't want to miss it, hit that subscribe button so that I can see you real soon.